Let's get some more analysis on deer and bring in Bloomberg Best Analyst, Stephen Volkman at Jefferies and Company. Steve is one of the, I should say, the number one rated analyst on deer, according to Bloomberg Data. He joins us now over the phone. Thanks for joining us on the line. Appreciate it, Steve. Pleasure to be here. All right, so we're looking at earnings per share of uh, 144. The estimate was at 122. Just curious about your initial reaction when you heard the uh, numbers this morning. Well, obviously, it was a great quarter. I mean, you know, we go through the numbers as quickly as possible in pretty good detail. And really what stood out to us was very strong margin performance, both in the uh, farm business, but also in the commercial and consumer business. So, okay. you know, we're, we're impressed by both of those things. Okay, but what didn't impress you? What, what I assume when, when you're looking at the fourth quarter forecast. Right. Well, your reporter kind of got it hit on the head. The street mm -hmm. always wants more, more, more here, right? So we had a good beat on the quarter, but we didn't raise the fourth quarter. And therefore, you know, there were obviously some expectations there. But frankly, nothing in the quarter itself that, that suggests any problem. It's just that the fourth quarter wasn't raised as much as people would have liked. You've been looking at Deer and company for some 12 years now. Anything stick out in your initial analysis of this third quarter report? Well, I think it's actually uh, very impressive what they're doing on the margin side. Remember that th these businesses are still kind of depressed. You know, we're still coming out of this downturn. You, you alluded to the better conditions in the crop markets, but those are going to take a while to sort of work their way through to equipment. And, you know, the fact is that Deere's margin, 15.8% in farm equipment in the quarter here, uh, was just a monster. That was 300 basis points better than what we were looking for. And even the construction and forestry business, which is still very depressed, did a 6.5% margin. Again, you know, 300 basis points better than what we were looking for. You know, I think this tells you that when these guys get some volume, there is a lot of leverage in this model, and uh, we're just starting that game. So, you know, I, I'd be actually, if the stock does turn out to be weak today, I'd absolutely be adding to those positions. A moment ago, you were talking about the lag time. Let's talk a little bit about what is going on right now in Russia and Ukraine with the severe drought, the worst drought we've seen in some, some say 50 years, some say a century. How could that translate and benefit deer? Well, obviously, you know, it, it, this is terrible for the folks that are involved here in the Ukraine and Russia, but, you know, it happens to be actually pretty good for the rest of the world that grows crops because clearly we're going to have to sort of step up and fill the gap here. You know, Russia was the third largest exporter of wheat. That's not happening anymore. So, you know, the U.S. and, and certain other places, Canada perhaps, uh, you know, maybe if we get a decent uh, crop down in um, Australia, we'll be able to sort of fill that gap. I don't think there's a crisis here, but mm -hmm. it will give the other folks opportunity to step up and ship more. And, you know, clearly that puts more money in farmers' pockets in those regions. And the folks who happen to buy the most of the big, large equipment that deer sells are in places like the Canada, uh, the U.S., and Australia. So, you know, to the extent that we step up and fill the gap, that's going to make these folks just buy more equipment. But, again, it's going to take, you know, it's going to take between two and as many as four quarters for that to really start to happen. Steve, thank you so much.